Broadway debut was in 1957, and in 1964, he made his film debut by appearing in Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove. Not one of my favorite movies. <laughs> he has since significantly influenced the American stage, screen, and television, appearing in performances such as Field of Dreams, The Hunt for Red October, Coming to America, Cry, The Beloved Country, one of my favorites, Conan the Barbarian, one of my husband's favorites, <laughs> Alex Haley in Roots. He also played Othello on stage and married Desdemona in real life. Please welcome James Earl Jones. This evening, I want to talk about the dilemma of illiteracy, and I will refer to the sources that are most available to me, plays, movies, history in general, the history of my family, and my own life. There's a scene in the 1952 movie, Viva Zapata, where Emiliano Zapata, played by Marlon Brando, has retired with his wife, Josefa. It is their wedding night outside his victorious, largely peasant revolutionary army is celebrating and singing. But Emiliano is not celebrating. He is morose. And Josefa says to him, is it something about me? And he says to her, no, no, Josefa, don't think that. Tomorrow, I'll see Madero and the men around him, men from the schools, lawyers, educated men. He's referring to the fellow revolutionaries who must meet the next day to form the new Mexican government. And he says, a horse and rifle will not help me there. And he whispers in her ear as if ashamed of himself. Teach me, teach me now, get a book now. She brings him a book and opens to the page. In, in, the, the, beginning, beginning, was, was, the, the, word. James Earl Jones possesses one of the most instantly recognizable voices in entertainment history. As a child, he suffered from a severe stutter, a condition that rendered him self-conscious and nearly mute during his youth. A high school English teacher who loved his poetry helped him overcome this problem, working with him, encouraging him, and challenging him to recite poetry aloud in class. This speaks to the power a teacher can have in a young person's life. Now, I could have chosen a simpler example of illiteracy from Alfred Uring's Driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> uh, Miss Daisy starts out plain not liking Oak. She would have not liked any chauffeur that her son hired to usurp her driving privileges. Now, Hope doesn't have the luxury of not liking her. He does like his job, and his job is driving 
Miss Daisy. <laughs> Later in the story, they've arrived at a peaceful coexistence and in the scene where he's driven into the cemetery so she can freshen up the flowers on her late husband's grave, Miss Daisy says, Hope, run back to the car and get that pot of azaleas for me and set it on Leo Bauer's grave. He says, Yasin, where the grave at? She says, I'm not exactly sure, but I know it's over there on the, on the other side of the weeping cherry. You'll see the headstone, Bauer. He says, Yasin, but he just stands there. She says, what's the matter? And he says, nothing, matter. He exits, but returns with the flowers. She says, I told you, it's over on the other side of the weeping chair. It says Bauer on the headstone. He says, how would that look? And she says, what are you talking about? He says, I'm talking about I can't read. She says, what? He says, I can't read. She says, that's ridiculous. Anybody can read. He says, no, not me. She says, then how come I see you looking at the paper all the time? He says, that's it, just looking. What's <laughs> happening in the pictures? He says, you know your letters, don't you? He says, ABCs, yes, pretty good. I just can't read. She says, stop saying that. It's making me mad. If you know your letters, then you can read. You just don't know you can read. I taught some of the stupidest children God ever put on the face of this earth that I couldn't read enough to find a name on a tombstone. The name is Bauer. Buck, 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 Bauer. What does that bar letter sound like? He says, sound like a B. She says, of course. But Bauer, er, er, Bau, er. That's the last part. What letter sounds like er? He says, Arthur. She says, so the first letter is, he says, B. She says, and the last letter is, 